Welcome to Hoop Chat by Fast Model Sports. I'm your host, Justin Scanson. With us today, we have uh, Drew Hanlon from Pure Sweat. Drew, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's our pleasure. Uh, we've been following you on Twitter and Instagram and all of your great content. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and what uh, you do with Pure Sweat. You know, basically Pure Sweat, you know, started as me kind of uh, just training local players around the St. Louis area. Uh, one of those local players being Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards. And uh, as I continued to work with him, I started uh, connecting with higher level players. And um, now I personally work with, you know, 15 to 20 NBA players on a regular basis, meaning do their film work uh, before and after every game. Uh, check in with them, you know, every two, three weeks, uh, make sure that we hit the court and just make little adjustments that'll help them throughout the season and then spend the entire summer with them uh, doing workout plans that, that hopefully improve in the areas that they want to improve in. And then Pure Sweat, um, now I have, you know, close to 40 skills coaches under me around the country that um, use my same curriculum and all my teaching methods um, so that they can bring that same training to local players like I did when I was starting out. Well, Drew, it's been uh, amazing to watch the growth of some of the, some of your guys uh, over the last couple of years. Um, can you tell us a little bit about maybe one or two of your favorite drills that that our coaching community could use at uh, different levels? Yeah, no question. You know, one of the things that I like to do is I like to stay connected with the high school um, and college games just because I think it's so important to start developing players at a younger age so that, you know, by the time they do get up to that NBA level or or, or the highest level that they're going to play, they have those like foundations that they need to be able to improve on. So the first drill that I really love is the no paint drill. And it's a very simple drill. It's basically your traditional shell drill taken to the next level. So many times when you do shell drill as a player, you know, I played college basketball at Belmont and played uh, high school basketball at Webster Groves, which we were fortunate to win a state championship. So I played on some high level teams. And the one thing that I realized is when you do those drills day after day, you get good at them, but you also learn how to cheat the drill. And so if you're doing the shell drill day after day, it, it is building those good habits of, you know, the gap position, good on ball pressure, also good kind of help the helper position. But the no paint, paint drill allows the offense to attack more. And so the offense basically for whatever your shot clock is, or if you don't have a shot clock, maybe 30 seconds, you just basically have the offense try to drive it in the paint. If they get two feet in the paint, they get one point. If they get two feet in this charge circle, which if you don't have a charge circle at your high school, you just have to imagine that kind of like deep paint touch right next to the rim, then they get two points. They're never trying to score. They're basically trying to drive and kick, drive and kick. It started as a defensive drill because basically defenses are just trying to keep them out of the paint. So we're working on good gap position where you're really responsible for, you know, half of a body basically. So the guy guarding the ball, he's responsible for basically funneling it, uh, you know, and not no straight line drives. And then the two guys that are basically responsible for help on each side, they're responsible for half of that guy and then half of their guy, good gap position. What it's turned into is a good offensive drill as well because, you know, obviously driving kicks, are, are lead to great shots. And so that also forces your offense to find gaps to kind of drive those seams. And then also, since they're not trying to score, they're always driving to try to create kind of a, a two on, you know, two defenders on the ball situation where they can kick it out. And then that next guy can drive it and get those paint touches that reward them with points. That's fantastic. I, and I love the concept of being responsible for half a player. Um, also the idea of having drills that, that work offense and defense uh, dual emphasis drills. Um, any other drills that you want to share with us today? I think another good one is, is my pure sweat 2v2 denying grind drill. And what that drill is, is it's basically you're teaming up in teams of two and, and you're going to play in a full court setting. I'm big on up-tempo basketball and people basically playing themselves in shape. As a player, I hated when coaches blew the whistle and said, all right, let's get on the line and let's just run. And so the best way for me to get guys in shape is just by making everything as game-like as possible and also for them going up and down the court because, as you know, up and down the court is different than a half-court kind of uh, you know, cardio setting. So the 2v2 deny and grind is simple. It's basically two-on-two two live, and as soon as there's a change of possession, so if the offense scores – then they immediately go in denying two new players that sprint on. So there's players on the each side of the court, and obviously the diagram is going to help out in this one. And they basically, a new team of two enters, and the team that just scored or got stopped, they immediately have to go in a deny position. The reason that's important is so many times in a game we celebrate baskets, 
or we pout about missed calls or we pout about bad passes or turnovers and we don't immediately transition from offense to defense or defense offense. So in this setting, regardless of the outcome, as soon as you either get stopped or get a score, you have to go deny a new team. The team that was just on defense inbounds the ball or outlets the ball to the new team. The new team has to catch it in front of them, obviously, otherwise it'd just be home run city. And then once they inbound the ball, they replace the two players where they were, and the new team that just got the ball inbounded to them, they attack in the full court against the team that was offense and now is on defense. Then after that possession plays out, it's the exact same thing. The team that was on defense inbounds the balls or outlets the ball to two new players that sprint on, and the team that just had, you know, transitioned in the full court that was on offense, they immediately turn, deny, and try to, you know, get a five second call. Once the team does successfully inbound the ball, then they're on defense for a full court. So it's continuous 2v2 in the full court. Basically, after you get scored on, um, you inbound the ball, or if you get a stop, you outlet the ball. If you're on offense, whether you score or you get stopped, you immediately deny, and it's just continuous 2 on 2 and you get tired quick. And when you get tired, that's when kind of the bad habits come out, and that's where the teaching moments occur. Sounds like a great drill for offense, defense, conditioning, and that next play mentality. Well, Drew, uh, thank you so much for your time. Tell us, uh, tell us where we can find you, Twitter, Instagram. Where can we find you? Yeah, the best way is uh, at Pure Sweat on both Twitter and Instagram. Um, those are the best two places. And we've actually got a new website coming out, puresweatbasketball.com. Um, is already our website, but we're re- relaunching um, a new one later this December, which will be great because we're going to have uh, basically a running blog of videos and, uh, you know, fast model um, diagrams where people can actually see all of our favorite drills and drills that'll help coach us throughout the season. Because we know that, you know, during the season, when you're making those mid season adjustments, you're kind of your head scrambling, trying to find your favorite drills. And, and we're hoping to kind of provide those resources for those coaches. So, um, that'll be another great place for them to check out, you know, later this month. Outstanding. We'll link that up in the description of the video. Drew, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we appreciate having you and, uh, keep doing a great job growing the game of basketball. Awesome. Thanks for all you guys do as well. Thanks, Drew.